Okay. We have to turn this on. Get some air into the intake. And... Oof. Did I? That's very steep. Wait, uh, I can't like cancel this. What is it? Oh, it rolled. Oh, <laughs> I don't have my welder with me or my fire extinguisher oh it rolled very far um hmm all right fire extinguisher this fire is usually like under here somewhere i don't know if it's still on fire must be right Welder. Okay, let's see if I can weld the fuel tank. Mm, might be out of fuel. Okay, I'm out of first welder. I'm pretty sure there will be a welder on this recovery truck somewhere. Turn the light on. No, battery might be dead. Oh, the door closed. And the lights are on, but they're just like super weak. Hopefully that means I can open the hood. Yeah. Okay, um, there's almost no way that I could even get it on the back of the orange truck. But if it's got a little bit of charge in some fuel, it might start. It's got no fuel and no battery, or like the most minimal amount of battery. So I'll probably be towing it, and towing it back up to North Mire Outpost is probably the easiest thing to do. Yeah, it's definitely closer to North Mire. Just squeeze past. There we go. Okay, right. We'll go. Hmm. Oh, is there a rope on here already? Seems like it. Rope to the winch and to then this winch. Oh well, I guess I guess this is it. Why does this have lights on the top? There's no switch in here for like emergency lights. Oh, I turned the emergency lights on. Number four on the keyboard apparently. <laughs> Where's the fire extinguisher? In the, in the, in the, in the come on. <laughs> Wait, is this on fire as well? Yikes! Of course, my weld is on the other side. Okay, be more gentle. Just these bridges, eh? They need to need to fix all their roads and bridges. Same with train tracks. I had an accident with a train earlier today. 
I was testing the steam diesel and uh, the train tracks just aren't connected. Okay, I think if I get rolling, I should be able to... Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> no, it's just gonna end badly. Okay, I got both of them. Not so bad. Uh, it's nearly night time, so I think we'll save and skip ahead. Man, movement's been balked. Usually I could be jumping and gaining speed now it's like when you when you land you it's like having brakes applied unless you time it right very strange okay well now that i've got all my money back 137 dollars where is that thing i'll show you this i've been working on this today this is a uh, uranium hopper so i'll be able to refine my uranium and put it into this hopper that's got a hatch on each side. Same same controls and setup on each side. Big nuclear radiation symbols on it. And it's got a funnel on the bottom. Um, so you can turn this key on, which takes a long time because I want to make sure I'm not accidentally dropping stuff. And then you have to push the button. So both of these have to be on. You can't turn the key then push it and turn the key off it'll stop so it needs both of these things which is good because you can't make the locked key turn off when it's closed which is annoying it's just the cover it's got top and bottom connectors which both have indicators and it's 2u in mcs sizing so it's like one connector three blocks then a space then three blocks and the next connector um it's got brakes and grippers because it's got grippers on both corners as in we could put it in er any orientation on tracks and slide it around which is nice and then this big button with roof doors ooh, ooh. <laughs> it reveals the hopper so you can put stuff in here um it's why is it It's got RGB lights on here and they're supposed to, they're supposed to flash. Oh, uh, infinite electricity, that's why. See, it's really useful to build things in Korea just so that you don't have any things broken. So when we open the top, it just does that. Just to let you know that there is a dangerous thing, we're doing dangerous goods, be careful. So that thing is going to go in whatever boat thing I'm building now, but also... Oh, I can't load them. These wagons that I built with TCP in them, the spacing's not correct, so I think I'll have to build another one. These container connectors on here are set up for, I think, 4U. So four units of space for each set, and there's four containers on there. But being that nuclear thing is 2U, I might set something up so it's got 2U spacing the whole way down. So this thing needs to be able to have that little 2U container placed on it somewhere and still work as both a land vehicle and a watercraft. This is what's going to be transporting our ore to, or our ingots, to the power plant. It's very big, isn't it? Maybe it should be longer because it's quite wide so the middle is 13 wide which means vehicles should just fit on it and then we need to bring it up so it's got some buoyancy and I want to cover the track so the track is kind of gonna be as high as it can get I'm thinking I should just cover the edge of the tracks or the outside That'll give me more space for buoyancy. I won't need this wall. And then I just need to figure out what kind of slope it's going to be. It's probably seven. That's four. I could do five, maybe. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So if I come across here, eleven. 
that's where a five would end. If I come across, oh, if I come across 22, I think. I think it'll be six. So we'll bring the fluid jets all the way to the back. Oh, they have to be there so they can be covered. They probably need to go back one or two so that they can have a fully enclosed thing. I'm thinking like if I do this, then I can have access for repairing. But I can also completely block that off. It's not quite six, and this isn't quite 45 either, so I think I need to lift this wheel up and out potentially, but I think if I can match a six slope, that should be good. It should look quite nice. So take a wedge. Oh, six isn't gonna work either. I'm a dummy. Uh, it'll be seven. Five or seven. It's also done some real gross shading on that. I wonder if I can place it in a different orientation. Yeah, see now the shading's a lot better on that side. Oh, back to being poo. I guess we're just not getting good shading on this one. I'm not actually sure if this is a good idea because I won't be able to walk around on this. It's a nice slope. And it lines up basically perfectly with that track. But for walking around on it, it's going to be kind of wonky because you are constantly going to be hitting solid square like 90 degree walls what i think i'd have to do is find so the block is there but it's not doing any wedge it's, yeah hmm hmm if i put a two so a one by two at every time there's like a real hard face that may let me walk over it yeah i mean that's uh, it's an illusion of what's really happening. But then the other thing is the color. It's gonna be like this weird mushy gray. It's not too different, but the fact that it's on the top is kind of what's bad. You get this weird like, this must be the actual outline of the shape or something, I don't know. I kind of want to keep it and at the same time, I don't want to keep it. I might be able to like stripe it with something that's like if I do a black or a red do some kind of colored stripe that will help hide the shading so I bet I can get this color to look kind of similar that's kind of close what if there was just like a weird red stripe oh hmm hmm I might be able to get it close but it's going to be a lot of fiddling around Let's close off all this because then I'll know where it needs to become more buoyant. If I separate where the wheels are, this section in here, this is going to be my most, where most of the buoyancy is going to be coming from. I'm not doing it in symmetry mode. I need to get this shape put in first and then put the XML wedge over top of it. So now it's sealed and then the 1x7 should hide it all quite nicely. Now I just need to copy and flip it. And before I paste it in though, I'm going to remove the fluid jet. So that I don't end up with wonky animations on a fluid jet. Then I've got to paste all of these. This thing should be fairly buoyant with so much air in the sides. So I was thinking, right, I'm either going to drive a truck on here with the container with my uranium ingots in it, or I'm going to load that onto here and then pull it off with a crane. But I don't know if I could get a crane on here without it tipping a whole bunch. And also, where am I going to put my engine? I'm going to have to have two engines that are connected. Let's build the engine first anyway, because it has to be a three, 3x cylinder and it has to be like in line like this and there's going to be two of them so i can do two separate six or two separate three cylinders clutch on the back or a clutch on the front because it's in this tight space as well i'll turn these sideways and that'll give me the manifold ports on the side that i can access 
What I'm trying to figure out right now is placement of this radiator because I want to put it like right up against, right up against the manifold. And if I use a small impeller, I can do that where my RPS can just connect into a wall and then that can come off the power from the engine. And I just run that, yeah, see that's fine. And then exhaust goes outside this one's going in the left, so it's all kind of left oriented. And three gearboxes is probably okay. And yeah, and then on here we just have air manifold can go directly onto that. And same with fuel manifold. And then I will drop this down, cut this. Oh no, I missed one. And then bring it back as far as I can. Hmm, I might move those gearboxes so that they're like on this unused space oh but we are cutting into the roof here so we can't actually go that far back probably here i think yeah here is far back and then paste that there flip it around the other way Ta -da. engines so these are pretty inaccessible for welding if there is an issue I could put a door in, perhaps. That's probably an okay solution. Let's me see most of it. If I open those doors. So from these gearboxes, they need to pipe down and then connect. So both engines will be connected. So now we have two highly geared engines connected and outputting together. And then we take that output and then that gets split into the power of the fluid jets. And that way we avoid oscillations. If one engine happens to be going a little bit faster than the other one, there's not going to be a weird power distribution where like the left left side is outputting more than the right. And when it can just it helps avoid weird turning situations. And then I can actually be a bit cheeky here. So as my ear comes up inside the xml block which is good so i can just do a fluid port and you'll never see it a few moments later okay here we go <laughs> i just took the steering system out of the minor vehicle seems like it's working it's a little bit suspicious but I don't know, it's, it's going I've got vehicle damage on, so if I hit anything, we'll know about it. I haven't hooked up the engines. What I've done is I've put electric motors in the back because I'm finding that it's better to generate electricity and then send it to a motor and then use the motor to control the tank steering. It must be some kind of torque output thing. And then depending on how it works for the fluid jets, I might use just the engine power directly. So I'll have like, it'll either send power to a generator to run land mode or it'll send power directly to the fluid jets to run water mode if water mode works okay with electric motors then i might just have the engines run generators the whole time i guess it floats upside down uh it's not good so I could flip the engine around and put the generator down this end. At the moment I've just put a generator in here because I'm not sure, not sure what I'm really doing here. See the motor is hooked up to tank steering though, so it'd be doing some real wacky stuff when not in tank steering mode. It would just need a switch box I think. But I do want to get it in the water though and see, we'll see if it floats at all. Because it's got some buoyancy but it might not be enough. Hmm, does not float. I might have to bring it up and make it more of a platform so they like cut up to here. It gives it a lot more of like a boat shape. There's a snake in my boot. So I guess there's just a lot of weight in the front and I either seal up more of the front to create more buoyancy. I'll be adding pivots anyway to make it 
a lot more buoyant. Now I need to figure out what I'm doing with the engine. I think that's a good kind of spot, eh? Because then you can weld the crankshaft and the cylinder. So yeah, what I'm thinking, I should flip the engine around. Should I flip the engine around? Yeah, I should flip the engine around. I might actually combine the engines before they go into the generator or before they go into gearboxes. So that's my two engines connected. Generator won't fit in the bottom here. I can get two, one on each side. I'm gonna use the piece of the floor on the outside. So hopefully that doesn't interfere with anything. They can come all the way forwards. And there's a whole lot of stuff that can just be cut out of this. That's going to go to here, and then this is both engines connected into this. Goes into three gearboxes, all at three to one. I'm going to run this pipe all the way across to the other side. And then I'm going to run another three gearboxes. I don't know if it needs or can even do this many gearboxes. It probably can't, but I'm using space that would otherwise be void and that goes backwards and is that yeah that's in the right place and then we punch two holes in there and connect this all the way up and then we pipe both generators up and chuck it a little a little 90 degree and then over here it's a little bit different because we need to put in a T that is two motors connected to two generators at it's like some crazy high ratio um, and then the electric motors this gearbox is controlling the tank reverse so what I need is some clutches I need it to come from the motor and then split into two clutches helps if you do it in symmetry okay so this back section controls the steering and then the front section will just change the signal that the motors are getting so it'll become on a lever and then it'll go forwards and I'll put the fluid jet in here somewhere. I might even be able to poke it out the back. I don't know what this, how close that hitbox is. Oh, uh, it's kind of close. What I can do is I can get rid of this wall and then bring it back to here. So now the fluid jets are like more at the back of the boat. They don't actually need to be poking out, but... I don't know. Oh, I might need to cover it up though for this. Yeah, that's fine. I'll build a little, little wedgie thing. And then make sure to cut this fluid jet and put it on normally. Okay, I think I've figured out the control system. It's pretty weird, to be honest. So I can... Uh, it's not working. Uh, yeah, I only connected it to one side. Classic. Okay, we're driving. Normal land mode driving. I've got my display there that you can't see, but if I hit water mode... Now you can see the particles from the fluid jet. And we're a submarine. Going very fast as well. Not sure why it's a submarine. But that is working. Mostly. It's water. Is auto in the middle? Yeah, okay. This is with infinite electricity, so it is going very fast compared to what it should be doing. And getting stuck upside down is probably going to be a big problem. I could add a lot of weight to the bottom. I have weight in the sides, but what I think I need to do is take this pipe here which is my water inlet chuck a t-piece in there and then run that up 
into a fluid port. So it'll mean it's sucking in air. Uh, yeah, just normal operation, it'll be sucking in air. But when it's upside down, it'll now be in the water and able to just alter the pitch on the fluid jets. So one goes up, one goes down, and then flip it over that way. So you can imagine if we're delivering uranium, we'll be driving up to a dock that's this kind of height. Almost definitely going to need a crane or I'm going to be manually handling every individual brick, which I really don't mind doing because they're $26,000 each time. I think I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to manually unload them by hand. I don't think I'm going to get this done anytime soon to be honest but I still need to mine the uranium so there's not really much rush to get this done and I might still be able to build some kind of normal boat to be able to do the trip from basically FJ Warner up to the power plant it's not very far and any kind of boat would be able to do it this was just kind of an interesting idea and even if I do build a normal boat it's got to have wheels because I can't spawn it in the water or I can spawn it on train tracks and push it in the water but that seems kind of cheaty. Let me know what you think. What direction should I head with building a boat thing specifically to transport uranium ingots from FJ Warner to Brinkfield? That's about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. <laughs> oh jeez, excuse you.